By the turn of the 20th century, it had seemed as though most essential issues in physics had been resolved. Despite some cracks, as one would say, most everyday occurrences could be explained either through classical mechanics, thanks to Sir Isaac Newton and his laws of motion, or through electromagnetism, explained through the equations brought forth by James Clerk Maxwell. The forefront of scientific progress at this point in time was more so in the field of chemistry in which scientists were trying to determine what the atom was made of. So what were these cracks lying within the seemingly straightforward world of physics? Well, there were two distinct problems that stood out at the time. One was the puzzling photoelectric effect, which is a topic I will explain in another video. The second crack arose from modeling radiation from what is known as a black body. A black body is essentially any object that perfectly absorbs and perfectly emits energy. There is no light reflection taking place. If light is shot at it, it will be completely absorbed, and if light is seen coming from it, its source is from that object. A great example of a black body is the sun. The sun completely absorbs all light that hits it, and all light that comes from the sun is emitted from it, not reflected. This is different from all other bodies in our solar system. Take the moon, for example. The moon doesn't create its own light. Rather, it reflects light emitted from the sun, some of which reaches us, and we see that as moonlight. Okay, seems simple enough, but what was the problem with modeling radiation from these black bodies? Let's start from the beginning with two scientists by the name of Otto Lummer and Ernst Bringsheim. During the 19th century, they set up man-made black bodies and collected data to model the relationship between the wavelength of light emitted and the specific intensity, or energy density, of that light. They repeated this data collection at many different temperatures for the black bodies. After the experiment was complete, the data was organized into a graph that looked something similar to this. Each curve on this graph represents a relationship between the wavelength of emitted light and the specific intensity of the emitted light at a certain temperature. Two distinct relationships were immediately recognized after collecting this data. The first was that as the temperature of the black body increased, the overall intensity of light emitted from the black body also increased. This came to be known as the Stefan Boltzmann Law. The second relationship discovered was that as the temperature of the black body increased, the wavelength of light that was emitted at the highest specific intensity decreased. This came to be known as Wien's Displacement Law. As revealing as these two relationships were, there were still many more secrets lurking in this graph yet to be uncovered. The next task was to write a general function for these curves, one that would be able to relate the wavelength and specific intensity of light emitted from black bodies. A close attempt was made in 1900 by Lord John Rayleigh and James Jeans. They used their current understanding of classical physics to derive their black body function, now known as the rayleigh jeans Law. This derivation took a big step towards understanding thermal radiation, but it had one significant flaw. It didn't fit the data set for low wavelengths. Their equation implied that as the wavelength of emitted light gets extremely small, the specific intensity spirals out of control towards infinity. This obviously is impractical in the real world and contradicts the experimental data. So, there was a giant hole in mathematical understanding here. This came to be known as the ultraviolet catastrophe. Although this was a sizable gap, it was a gap that would only exist for a few short months. The solution to the ultraviolet catastrophe would come from a German specialist in thermodynamics by the name of Max Planck. Max Planck was born on April 23, 1858 in Kiel, Germany. His father, Julius, was a professor of constitutional law at the University of Kiel at the time. When he was nine years old, he enrolled into the Maximilian Gymnasium in Munich. Here, he developed three main passions, music, mathematics, and physics. He did happen to be a very talented pianist, but decided to pursue physics instead, and at the age of 16, he entered into the University of Munich. He studied both there and at the University of Berlin, where he studied under the notable physicist Gustav Kirchhoff, 
who coined the term blackbody radiation in the year 1860. Planck received his doctorate with a thesis in the second law of thermodynamics at only 21 years old and started work as a lecturer at the University of Munich. Five years later, in 1885, he would become an associate professor of theoretical physics at the University of Kiel. It was here, while working in Kiel, that he married his childhood friend, Marie Merck, in 1887. Two years later, he became a professor of theoretical physics at the University of Berlin, succeeding his former professor, Gustav Kirchhoff. It was here where he was working when he came up with his revolutionary approach to blackbody radiation in December of 1900. Planck proposed that rather than energy being absorbed and emitted continuously, it was only able to be absorbed and emitted in discrete packets or quanta. By using this assumption, he was able to rewrite the Boltzmann distribution, which is a formula that represents the average energy in a system. See, taking a classical mechanical approach to thermal radiation meant using a ratio of integrals to represent a continuous stream of energy via the Boltzmann distribution, which is exactly what Lord Rayleigh did when deriving his formula. Using the distribution this way would result in the average energy of a system being equal to the Boltzmann constant multiplied by the temperature of the system. But Planck, using his idea of discrete packets, rewrote this distribution, changing the integrals to sums of series in order to represent these discrete packets of energy in an energy distribution. He also changed the energy variable E into n times epsilon, where n represents the amount of energy packets and epsilon represents the energy of a packet. As minor as these changes were, they made monumental changes to the derivation. After Planck derived his formula in terms of n and epsilon, he noticed something special. The frequency, or the inverse of the wavelength, of light emitted was proportional to his newly introduced value epsilon. So Planck replaced epsilon with frequency, or f, in his equation. To keep f and epsilon equivalent, he introduced a new constant, h, to multiply the frequency by. This constant would go on to become known as Planck's constant and would turn out to be one of the most important fundamental constants of our universe. With this now complete derivation, not only did this new formula match the experimental data for long wavelengths alongside the rayleigh jeans law, but it also bypassed the ultraviolet catastrophe and matched the experimental data for short wavelengths as well. It was a near perfect match with the experimental data. Since Planck didn't have a fundamental explanation for this constant, and by seemingly contradicting the known laws of the universe to formulate the math to match the experimental data, he was understandably dissatisfied with his formula at the time and called it an act of desperation. He was unable to marry his formula with the current understanding of physics, even though the formula was correct. So although the problem of black body radiation had been solved, it seemingly left more unanswered questions than existed prior to tackling the problem. To add to this, there was still the unsolved problem of the photoelectric effect as well. These gaps in understanding would still go unfulfilled for another five years, when quantum theory would finally be verified at the hands of another up-and-coming German scientist by the name of Albert Einstein. Max Planck won the Nobel Prize in Physics for these discoveries in 1918 after a series of various experiments in the following years validated his foundations of quantum theory. He was elected to foreign membership of the Royal Society in 1926 and later was awarded the Copley Medal in 1928. He retired from his position at the University of Berlin in 1927. From 1930 to 1937, he served as the president of the Kaiser Wilhelm Society. In his later years, he worked on philosophical and religious topics rather than scientific ones, but remained a prominent figure in the scientific community. He was one of the first scientists to endorse the general theory of relativity proposed by Einstein in 1915. As incredible as Planck's career was, however, his personal life was just as tragic. His first wife, Marie, died to illness in 1909 after 22 years of marriage. Together they had four children, two daughters and two sons. Both daughters died at a very young age 
and his first son was killed in action during World War I. Plunk remarried two years after Marie's death to Marie's cousin, Marga von Hoslin, and together they had a son. When World War II broke out, Plunk committed to staying in Germany to preserve German physics, but renounced the Nazi regime. This would prove to be a costly decision, as his house was completely destroyed by bombings during the war. And, worst of all, his final remaining child with Marie, with whom he had grown very close, was executed for being a part of an assassination plot on Adolf Hitler in 1944. After the war, Plunk served as president of the Kaiser Wilhelm Society a second time, but for less than a year. In 1947, he and his family moved to Göttingen, where he would spend his remaining days. Plunk died on October 4, 1947, at the age of 89. Shortly after his death, the Kaiser Wilhelm Society was renamed to the Max Planck Society in his honor. Max Planck's groundbreaking contributions to physics, particularly his founding role in quantum theory, have left an endearing mark on the scientific landscape. By challenging established norms and introducing the revolutionary concept of quantized energy, Planck set the stage for a quantum revolution that transformed the course of physics. His legacy is one of intellectual courage, inspiring generations of scientists to question, explore, and push the boundaries of human knowledge. Max Planck's influence continues to resonate today, reminding us that even in the realm of the smallest areas, great minds can unlock the secrets of the cosmos.